Welcome to our live learning session, how to produce great audio. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. I uh, will see where, how far we get. This is a huge topic, so I don't know if we'll be able to unpack everything. Also, um, depending on where we get to and uh, how, how far we can get along, we will definitely try to at least give you um, some advice and some overview and some information you can use. And if I can get into actual practical demos, I will try to do that. Um, so we'll see where we go. This is always fun when you do these things live. Um, but we'll just take it one step at a time. So first, I just want to start with kind of different types of microphones, different kinds of gear. So if you were watching earlier on our show, not just too long ago, we were talking to Mr. Marty McPadden, and he, we were talking about, he was recommending microphones, and he's talking about the differences between a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone. And a condenser microphone is uh, really um, the one we use on this show here. So this guy, we get questions all the time as to what microphone I'm using. This is what's called, um, this is, uh, a headset microphone, uh, you know, it, you wouldn't really call it a lavalier microphone, but I, I, it is, I prefer headsets because they're generally hands-free. Another type of microphone would be like a clip. You've seen those little uh, lavalier clips. Um, and these types of microphones, I think, come in all shapes and sizes, whether uh, and different price ranges and so forth. This one in particular is made by a company called Countryman and Associates. Um, it's an older model of theirs. They've actually replaced it now. Um, but this one was called, at the time, comes in this cool little case. It's called the Isomax microphone. So I don't know if you can see that, but you just unzip it and it comes in this, and they have a variety of connectors. They can go to USB, they can go to XLR now. They, you just order sort of what you want it to go out as, and then you order the sort of style and color you want. And what's neat about their new ones, which I think are called the E6s or the E4s, um, you can head over to the Countryman website, but they actually will stabilize across both ears. So you'll get like a hook over, sorry, a hook over one ear, and then you'll get a, uh, um, a the microphone clip over the other, and it just, you can't knock it off when you get that two system stabilization. Uh, this These ones, because they're older, they didn't have that system at the time. These can kind of fall or move or just, you know, so at some point we'll probably, you know, if we, uh, a budget allowing, we'll probably update to the later versions. But these are fantastic, and they're hands-free. They allow me to gesture. Um, I don't have to be sort of, I don't have to have a big microphone like Larry King style in front. And, uh, you know, some people like that look. We do actually have a boom arm. Um, let me show you what that looks like. So I don't use this much yet. Um, again, partly because of what we were talking about because of pickup patterns. So every microphone, um, whether you're using one of these sort of barrel microphones or studio mics as they're called, whether you're using a headset, almost lavalier, they're all, um, or something like this Blue Yeti, which is um, we'll talk about in a second. But these are the different kinds and styles of microphones that you get to choose from. And um, they have different pickup patterns. So uh, there, there's really, in general, just to be, again, not totally comprehensive here, but um, they come in two sort of forms. Omni-directional, which mean, omni means all, which is really a pickup pattern that's all around the microphone and 360 degrees, no matter where you're picking up from. Or, um, and this is probably an example, an omnidirectional. What's nice about this one, though, while it may be omnidirectional, it's very small, and it doesn't have a, a, a long range for pickup. It's really best in that really close proximity. So, um, and, and so even though it's omnidirectional in all directions, you know, you could probably hear the rustle of my shirt or, or whatever, uh, it doesn't matter too much because it's so focally specific um, uh, on my, near my voice box. So my voice box tends to be by far the loudest sound. So an omnidirectional is not going to hurt you too much if your microphone is very close to your subject and your sound. Um, and in fact, an omnidirectional could be what you want. It's rarer to find um, the other kind of pickup pattern, which would be a cardioid, uh, or uh, which is really directional in one area. And Marty gave a great example of how, you know, he was right near the mic, but he just talked just outside the range to the left of the mic, and th his voice dropped way off. Um, and so uh, a cardioid can really pick up in one area, and that could be when you want to minimize sound on the other side or you really want to focus. So some of these studio mics are best when you talk to them closely. Um, there's some very good tutorials on YouTube you can watch, how to position your mic, um, different types of mics. My favorite types of tutorials, and I'm sorry we can't do this here because, again, the prep alone for this is, is pretty large, uh, is when you hear the differences for each 
different pickup pattern and so forth. Now, the final thing to cover here on pickup patterns is some microphones have switches that will allow you to change their pickup patterns. So you can actually dynamically with like this guy, this is a Tascam, um, and it's the, uh, the TM, we just got these actually, the TM280. Um, and this is, uh, will not only allow you to pick up the, the pickup pattern, um, with a switch and change from directional to omnidirectional, but it also allows you to change the sensitivity as well. So how um, you know loud, what are you going to be using it for, um, and it will change the like just how sensitive the microphone is. Um, so be aware of that. Now uh, I also mentioned. So we talked about there's different styles of microphones, different kinds. Uh, there's different pickup patterns with microphones. There's also um, Again, the, the difference between a, a condenser and a dynamic. Uh, what do I mean by a condenser microphone versus a dynamic microphone? Well, a condenser microphone is, uh, like again, these countrymen's, they're powered. So they actually need electrical power coming to them. Uh, and they tend to, because of that, they tend to be very sensitive, but they'll also pick up, uh, they can pick up hum, they can pick up room noise, they can pick up electric signals and so forth because they are in fact, um, they have charge in them. And so this, uh, this guy is really great, but if you don't have, if you're not plugging it into something that can run power into it, then it's not gonna work for you. Um, now some uh, condenser microphones have a little battery compartment you can put in a battery, uh, and some don't. Some require what's called phantom power. Phantom power is uh, the, you know, just that, that, that charge. It's a 48 volt charge that comes through um, the, uh, one of the pins and it is what powers the microphone. So there's often, and let's see if I could show you this. I'm gonna actually show you how this microphone right here is powered. So I have a camera here on my desktop. Let me actually pull this up and I'm going to pop that into my wirecast window. So let's jump to my desktop here so you can kind of see this. So this is that C920, Logitech C920. It's great because it's kind of more or less fairly portable here. And I can show you how my microphone is currently being powered. So in the studio here, I have a, um, a mixer, a little mixer. And you can see I've labeled all the, let's get that out of the way, labeled all the inputs. So I've got mic one and mic two. I've got my Skype and Zoom. You can see my vo voice levels are coming in right there. And if I want to quickly mute my microphone, I can just tap this button. So this alone right here, having a mixer close by is really valuable because uh, it allows control. And for a long time, we didn't, I didn't have a mixer in the studio with me, which didn't allow me to do stuff like And what I said there was, even though I'm talking, you can't hear me because I just killed my microphone to the studio, to the control room, which goes into our board there and gets mixed into this program. Now, I wanted to talk about phantom power. There uh, is all of these sort of microphone inputs at the top um, can take, can be powered. Uh, and if we stand up here, you can actually see there's a little switch on the back. Let's see if we can show that. So this guy, right about, let's see if I can show this here, if I get this right, right about there, this small switch, you see right there it says phantom power. So that is, it's right next to the power switch. And again, if I was to switch that off, my microphone would stop working. So uh, that is how these microphones work. All right, so that's kind of uh, a quick, overview, not all, you know, you need to check with your mixer if you're, and the type of microphone you plan on using. So if you don't want to worry about phantom power and you don't want to worry about, I'm going to take this off for now, if you don't want to worry about phantom power and you don't want to worry about, um, you know, uh, whether you're using a condenser or a dynamic and so forth, um, the, you may want to just start with a simple sort of USB microphone. Uh, and this is, a, this is a Blue Yeti. I think this is their newest, latest model. Uh, and this has a USB um, attachment. And it can actually go right into the computer and plug in via USB. That's one of the great advantages of this type of microphone. 
as well as the microphone that we mentioned, uh, that Marty mentioned, which is the Audio Technica uh, ATR2100. So that um, is has a USB connection. The advantage of both this Blue Yeti and the ATR is that they also, they're, they're dual or they're hybrid microphones. They not only have a USB connection in the bottom, but they also have an XLR. Now this is a proprietary, actually there's a cable that goes in here at the bottom and it then comes out to an XLR connector. Um, and I actually have it right here. Um, but it go, this is a special cable. It looks like an XLR, but it is not in fact a full XLR cable. It's, it's, a, it's just for this microphone. Um, but then on the other end of this connector, it then goes into, splits into two XLR attachments for a left and a right. So this can do actually stereo. It's kind of cool. But this is a simple way to get a great microphone uh, that is USB. Um, it's not terribly common to find USB headset microphones that aren't also used for like uh, phone calls and Skype calls, but those can be great too. I actually, there's even Turtle Bay headsets that are, have big old headphones and then also have a little sort of gamer headsets. Those can work too if you don't mind wearing headphones and so forth. On this show, in order to hear my guests and hear everybody, I like in-ear monitor headphones. Um, and these are uh, what I actually come out of the, let me pull this up again. Let's just show you how I listen to my guests and how I hear things. So um, I actually threw the board here. Let's pull this up. Um, I'm connected to the headphones from the, the board. And then just coming out of this little headphones splitter, which I actually have plugged in there so I, a second person can plug in. We have two people. Uh, and I, uh, I just run this right into my little earbuds. And so a simple pair of earbuds works great. You don't need anything fancy. Um, but if you look up like a studio monitor, in-ear studio monitor, headphones, you can find, I think these ones, they're like $40. Uh, and I don't even remember the brand name, but they're great. They stay on my ears and they work really well. Okay, so in addition to, um, kind of talked about different styles of microphones, we talked about um, different kinds of uh, uh, sort of in-ear monitors and studio versus condenser. USB microphones. There's, um, you may want to, depending on the microphone you get, or the microphones you have, or the microphones you want, um, as long as you can get them into your computer at some point, uh, you will, you'll be fine, right? So whether you use uh, a microphone like a USB, which goes in directly USB, whether you use an XLR microphone, like these countrymen's, and you go directly into your mixer, and let's say your mixer is a USB mixer and can go, you can plug that USB directly into your computer, which can then connect your audio from your mixer to Wirecast. Um, as long as you eventually get to a USB form, you're going to, uh, you'll be fine. And so there are a number of ways to get from what we call analog which would be something like this XLR microphone. It's analog because it's, it's not digital. It's not ones and zeros. This is all sort of electronic or um, signal through the, the, you know, uh, through the, the wiring. It's very, uh, it's, you know, the old style of audio. And there's really great microphones that still do this. And again, these are perfect examples. They're not digital microphones, they're analog. So we have to convert these to USB at some point in the chain before they can get into our digital software. Um, so how do we go from this XLR to uh, USB? Well, as I said, a number of different ways to do that. So the first way is to just go into a mixer that has a USB out. Simple. A lot of modern mixers now offer that. The one in our control room offers uh, audio, is a, is a newer mixer and it has a USB which we can plug directly into our computer and Wirecast sees any of the audio that it's currently you know, mixing. The other thing um, you can buy is if you have an older mixer, like the one I happen to have here, you can go into, you can buy a little USB adapter, an analog to USB converter. So this, uh, let's see if you can see this. Maybe the best way to do it would be to show you on the webcam here. So this is, um, again, brand doesn't matter too much on this, but the Sabrent. The Sabrent, uh, if you just type in, you know, there's a ton of different competing, competing ones. There's other ones called like C Media uh, and so forth. These are like $8 on Amazon. 
and they convert. So you can see on USB on one side, just goes into your computer. And on the other side is just a simple headphones and a little microphone. And so one goes out and one goes in. And so you can take uh, an older mixer like the one we have here, and you can run out of the outputs. So you could go out of the back, out of the main outs. I mean, any of these output ports, and there's a bunch more on the back of the mixer, but I'm just going to focus on this, this uh, headphones one. You just run a simple sort of, again, uh, eighth inch, which is analog. This is your standard sort of headphone jack. Uh, it's a small, and I'll show that in a second. You just run from the out um, to this. And, uh, and then you connect it to the in on this, the microphone in. And you're more or less good to go. Uh, and you will have converted from an analog to a digital signal at that point. So, um, and I sh I'm sure you're all familiar with these types of cables, but there it is, that's just a headphone. And um, you wanna be aware that obviously you'll need different types of cables. That's where this starts to get interesting. Is, you know, this is a male to male because for whatever reason, this, you know, there's different sort of um, conventions with different kinds of cables uh, and, uh, and, and connections. So often you'll find an out is not, uh, is, is, it doesn't make sense to have one of these like sticking out of the mixer because it'll just get broken off. So they really have to go male to male. So a lot of the cables you'd need for this type of connection would be a, a male to male. And go to the end point here on your USB and then just connect this other side to your headphones jack or wherever you're going. Now there's other things you should learn about. Um, some of the signals may sound quiet or they might be too like scratchy. There's such a thing as a line input and a mic input. And the, mic, the general rule of thumb is the mic input is much, much quieter than the line input. And so whatever you plug into a line input should be, have, be louder. Um, and you may need to adjust accordingly for that. So if you're really a good audio engineer, you've done your homework, you know whether you're taking a mic output and plugging into a line input or vice versa, um, but your ears are gonna tell you real fast uh, if, you're, if something's wrong. So uh, mixer's one way, buying a little adapter is another simple way. These don't always give you the best quality. You may pick up noise or signal noise. You may need to listen or hear if you hear a whine or a hum. Sometimes they can pick up electronic signals in your uh, studio and so forth. So that's, that's a, a great uh, tip there or just something to be aware of. Um, now, the final way is you can get something like this, which is uh, this is sort of an old um, H4N Zoom recorder. This guy is, uh, was really popular for a long time, and it's popular because you can see it's got like two channels. You can record, write, audio only. It even has some mics on it, so if you want to stick it up to people's mouths and interview them that way, you can do that. There's newer models available, and it also has these cool connectors, which are like, sorry, I'm going to the wrong camera here, um, which are multi-purpose connectors. So you can connect uh, like a large TRS connector, which would be something like your, your guitar connector. This is the super, sort of the big cousin to the eighth inch. These are called quarter inch, or that's the size, and then um, also TRS. And so these can go in directly, like a micro, like a guitar just clicks in. Um, but you also, as you can see, they're dual purpose. They can also connect um, an XLR right in there. And even better, something like the Zoom can do uh, dynamic, or it could do condenser, so it can actually run phantom power. And there's a little phantom power. I actually turn it on in the menu inside the recorder. Now, the final thing this does is it doesn't just record; it can do pass through. So you can do uh, you can actually plug a USB in, and so now you've just you have an all-in-one sort of handy device that can convert not only record but it can also convert from analog to digital. So you can use this in pass through mode, and uh, it works really well. So that's another way to, again, convert from audio to video. I'm sorry, analog to digital. All right. Uh, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't at least quickly mention or talk about, um, so all these different ways to bring in different um, sources and microphones and so forth are, are pretty important. The, the next thing, that, you know, so you can imagine that uh, 
you know, if you're doing a complex setup or you have a lot of different audio devices and so forth, you probably want to um, probably want to have a lot of adapters on hand. So a lot of converters and adapters. I, I, I really, it's kind of funny, but this bag contains a number of adapters that I've pretty much carried around with me for years. Uh, since I was a, you know, a kid, actually, when I was hooking like my dad's stereo equipment and things like that, a lot of them have followed me around. Um, and then uh, when, you know, as I got older and I did media production and video production and all that stuff, I still needed all these because I used them all the time. So you just, you know, just to show you a couple here, they're really handy. Um, so here's one. Uh, this is a, a barrel connector, a converter. It goes obviously from XLR to um, TRS, to the quarter inch. Uh, and so this might be useful if you just don't have the right inputs on your mixer or your board. Another one that goes the opposite way. So this is a barrel connector. It goes from TRS to XLR, right? Um, there's other ones, just to just show you a couple ones here. But there's these ones are usually very handy as well. Uh, these go from the large quarter inch sort of TRS down to the eighth inch. Okay. Another one we probably couldn't do without here in the studio. This is a common one, but uh, uh, let's see if I have it here. Here it is. This would be a TRS, sorry, XLR. I just added a TRS connector uh, to an eighth inch stereo sort of headphone jack. So you can take something like a, a long cable or um, XLR cable and convert it down. Uh, so having, it's, it's usually not possible to have too many adapters and connectors because you might, you'll often find you'll need to hook something up that you just need to get from one format to another or one type of cable to another or one type of connection on one type of cable to another type of connection. Um, so just keep that in mind. And uh, let me briefly cover cables just so you know. Um, so the XLR cable, your standard XLR cable is just, you know, it's, a, it's called three pin, three pin connector, and it's usually got a, a male and a female end on it. Now, um, these can, what's great about these is they can run long distances. So you can run a microphone uh, and over a long, uh, long floor, get great audio, and run power to it. So I can run this microphone all the way to our control room, no issues. I would have a lot more problems if I ran a super long, thin headphone cable all the way, and I ran a microphone. You can't really run power over this. It's, so set, it's not as well shielded, so it picks up electronic signals. It's kind of like the difference between an HDMI and an SDI cable on the video side. S SDI cables are much more uh, stable and can run longer distances, just like XLR. Um, these guys and the HDMI cables do not hold run signal very well across long distances for video and just like um, headphones thin sort of eighth inch cables do not run well over long distances so when you're you know consider that if you are doing long cable connections uh, TRS again have a shorter length that they can handle. So XLR is really your best bet for a long cable run. TRS cables um, don't do as well uh, over long distances. Okay, that's kind of the sort of extent of my audio knowledge. Um, I'm not a trained audio engineer, so I can't, um, I know enough uh, to, to do production, I think, for the most part. Uh, and I've gotten, you know, I've learned a lot over the years also forgotten a lot um, but you know get sort of get you started pick up a, a microphone and pick up a you know a simple you know either converter or just somehow get that microphone to USB now the microphone could be USB from the start or it could be um, you convert it along the way and that's gonna go a long way to making you sound better and as uh, we do recommend that you spend time on your audio most of all, first of all, because that is really, as long as people can hear you clearly, understand you clearly, uh, they'll stick around, they will watch or listen to what you have to say. If it's scratchy and not good quality, then you're not going to want to, uh, they're not going to want to stick around, no matter how good your video looks, if, you're, if your audio is terrible. Uh, people just, just, nobody can put up with terrible audio for too long. 
All right, I think that's enough to cover for today. Uh, there's a lot more I'd like to talk about. I actually like to get into Wirecast and talk about audio routing, which I should cover in our next session. So why don't we call our next learning session part two, and I'll talk about some audio routing, mix minusing in Wirecast, and specifically, how can you export from, sort of go out one device from your computer and into uh, C Media. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm just gonna actually show you, hopefully we'll have time to set up, and we'll, we'll uh, go from something like the tiny microphone uh, sort of adapter, and we'll go back in. So we'll actually, I'll show you how to route some audio within Wirecast, uh, and I don't know if we'll have full time to do a full Skype two machine, you know, three setup um, like we talked about, but at least I can show you some benefits and advantages of routing audio um, using the tools Wirecast has available to you and some little devices like this guy. I really do recommend everyone pick up at least a couple of these these days because they're just handy, especially if you're dealing with microphones and uh, pro audio. All right, that concludes our learning session for today on pro audio. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time for our live learning session after next week's Wirecast Live show. Thanks. Thanks.